What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today we are going to talk about chicken tractors. So how are the goats today? Well, no one is worse. So that's positive, right? No one is worse. Carly's poop is pellets and normal, so that is awesome. Still pretty lethargic. Fomacha is still pretty low, like a four on the scale there. So it'll take her a little while to bounce back, but she's up and eating and she goes out grazing every so often. All good signs. Meatloaf still has some runny poop. So we're gonna up his dose a little bit here. But as you can see, he is up and eating. Hey buddy. How you doing buddy? I definitely wish everyone was miraculously better. However, that's not how these things work. So I will certainly settle for incremental improvement and no one getting worse. That's right, behind me is a chicken tractor that I built probably about a year and a half ago. It never really became a chicken tractor. It just became a shelter for our free range chickens. Because at the time, they were just kind of going wherever they wanted. We didn't have Premier One fencing and we let them roam free, which is actually kind of how we prefer them anyway, except when we leave them out, they get attacked and then we lose them. So we had to find a way to protect them. And now they're behind Premier One fencing and they're in the uh, new coop. Oh, today is day two of the Vlogist Challenge. Woohoo! It's Vlogist. It's Vlogist. Da, 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 da. I don't know. This tractor actually held up exceptionally well and it was very inexpensive to make. A lot of it was materials that we already had on site and there were a couple things we had to buy, but it really wasn't a bad build at all. In all honesty, I probably could have built it better, but it's a chicken tractor. So done is good as long as it works, right? I never actually did put a front on this. I didn't put a gate on it. Originally it was supposed to get chicken wire on the front and a gate here. Uh, we just never added it on because we changed our processes. As soon as I was done building it and I went to move it, I realized just why this wasn't going to work. You see, it's heavy. And I mean incredibly heavy. The coop itself is primarily made of two by six, two by four, hog panel, chicken wire, and a tarp. Originally we didn't have two tarps on it, we only had one, so that way they had a shelter area and they had an open air area or skylight or whatever you want to call it. At one point we had clear plastic on top and that worked for a little while too. In the winter it was an incredibly great space for the chickens because it was kind of like a chicken sauna. Because of the clear plastic on top it actually created some heat in here and kept them warm. What I would see all winter long is they would come out of the coop and they would go directly into this and hang out in there. So we would put their feed and their water in there and everything was great. Because of that radiant heat, the water wouldn't freeze. So it was pretty nice. But again, it stayed there forever because it was so heavy and there wasn't any grass for them to eat. Totally defeated the purpose. At some point, I did add wheels to it and that kind of helped the situation. But at that point I was like, we should probably look at something else. This isn't going to go to waste though. This is actually going to become a daytime shelter for our goats. Because believe it or not, they like this thing too. In order to provide some stability to the structure, because I couldn't just put the hog panel over top, I actually created a ridge beam that goes the whole way across and provides a pretty good amount of stability in there and also allows me to hang whatever I want from the roof. That way, if it was able to be moved, things could just kind of stay where they were and I wouldn't have to take them out, put them back in. Just like, you know, some of these other chicken tractors out there. Just didn't need to be so heavy. I braced the corners so that way when you would pull it, you wouldn't get as much flex. Unfortunately, you do get a tad bit of flex because of how wide it is. So I could have done that a whole lot differently too. We did move this around a little bit before we had wheels on it. There were no strong signs of wear on it but I could see it flex and I knew that that's probably not the best situation. And if we did move it every day, I doubt it would hold up. Again, not the best design I've had 
Uh, definitely needed to make it on a smaller scale. It needed to be lighter. It's a goat shelter now. The chicken tractor back here is actually the second one that I built. And this one is super duper light. It also has done well in the heavy winds and the heavy rains so far. I don't know how it would do in heavy snow. See, the other one withstood incredibly heavy winds, incredibly heavy snows, ice, everything. That sucker lasted through some of the worst winters we have seen. This one, not so much. I originally built it for meat birds because we had been thinking about meat birds. So I said, okay, let me come up with a different design. And that's how this came about. But it's a wee bit small for that. Like I might be able to get 10 birds at the very, very beginning. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to get 25 meat birds in that little guy. It's only four feet by eight feet, roughly. However, it's proven perfect for a broody hen to take care of her small chicks and raise them into some larger chicks. Well, I guess they won't be chicks when they're larger. What, pullets and then chickens? Whatever, it's working. This one's made completely of PVC, zip ties, and a tarp. Pretty simple. No screwing, just a whole lot of PVC cement and zip ties. Did I mention zip ties? Cause it's got a whole lot of zip ties on it. A couple things that this one still needs are, one, I need a way to open it and close it from the top versus picking it up uh, and letting the bottom open up. That would make things a little bit easier getting things in and out and it would free up a hand. Also, it doesn't have a ridge bar across the top of the roof. So that'll be something that I wanna add to this. We are gonna continue to use this specifically for brooding because I can't express to you how easy it is. As of right now, I would solely use this in the spring, summer, fall time, not necessarily the winter. But that's okay because we don't usually have broody hens in the winter, we typically have only had them in the spring, summer, or fall. Mama's not feeling me being in here right now. She's not letting me get anywhere near those little babies. Every time I go this way, they go this way. Every time I go that way, they go that way. We're gonna go out of here. At this point, you're probably wondering, why are you telling us all this? And that, my friends, is a great question. You see, we finally pulled the trigger and ordered ourselves some meat birds. Yep, we got 25 Cornish crosses coming. They get mailed out on August 12th, so I guess that'll be part of Vlogist, which means I gotta start building myself a real, honest to goodness, chicken tractor! And instead of me messing around with coming up with my own designs, which sort of have some flaws here and there, go figure, I'm just gonna use the stress-free chicken tractor from John Siskovich. Siskovich, Siskovich, Sukovich, I don't know, you all know his name. I'm gonna use that one. Only, I'm gonna make slight modifications because I wanna save on time. So for the next few days, follow along with me as I build this sucker and we'll see how it looks. For now, have a fantastic day. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for Vlogist Day 3. Subscribe, comment, like this video, hit the bell if you haven't already. Oh, and I got a phone call from the state police while we were there. Have a great day, folks. It's day two of Vlogist. Day two of Vlogist.